are you an engineer, a scientist or a manager finding it hard to make decisions because your process flow sheet may be technically quite complex and the financial impact of your decisions may be significant? Now if that's true, you are not unique. What it actually means is that you are one of those people working out in the process engineering field that's relied upon to make important decisions because of the skills you have. So hi there, my name is Johan. Having myself worked in the mining industry for over 20 years, I know that these technical challenges are appreciated across all the different sectors. Obviously none more so than the operations themselves, but then also the process engineering companies, the R&D companies and the equipment suppliers and manufacturers. Now all of us in order to survive we have to innovate but innovation is hard and quite risky. So I want to tell you more about how we use computer modeling and simulation to innovate. So for the rest of this video Let's work from the screen. So why is it so difficult to connect the dots in industrial processes? Now that's because the physics and the chemistry are complex, even for processes that may be perceived as being simple. We as process engineers impose restrictions on mass and energy flow through pipes, valves, reactors and so forth, because we ultimately want to maximize yield and minimize costs. Therefore, the physical world of friction, although we cannot exist without it, is also our Achilles heel. In order to solve problems and innovate, we first have to mathematically acknowledge that our processes and equipment operate in the physical domain. Here's an arbitrary and quite simple comminution flow sheet uh, model I built for the purpose of this video. So let's uh, press the play button. Um, you can see the time starting to tick at the bottom here. That's in second. Everything's in SI units. We could look at the uh, slurry flow rate delivered by the pump and we could for example look at the pressure. Um, created at the inlet of the hydrocyclone. So as the controller tells the pump to switch on, in other words slurry starts to flow, you can see how the dynamic pressure increases um, at the hydrocyclone, and that's obviously because of friction, because of the internal workings of the hydrocyclone. So this back pressure created by the hydrocyclone, in turn, influences the efficiency of the pump. So this is just a very simple example to show our physical modeling allows us to capture the highly integrated behavioral characteristics of the process simultaneously. As you would have noticed from the simulation I just showed you, and as anyone being involved with plant operations would know, steady state operation is really a theoretical concept. In a real world, everything is dynamic, and this becomes more true as we zoom in from a macroscopic to a microscopic scale and as we shorten our sampling time frames. So there's a better way to design and economically optimize our processes and equipment than treating material flow, physical and chemical changes as steady state phenomena. Let's rerun the simulation now focusing on this mill sump area here. I've also increased the simulation time to 43,200 seconds, which is 12 hours. Now firstly, one cannot simulate flow sheet dynamics if you haven't also included the dynamics of the various controllers. So in this uh, very simple example, we've got two controllers. This controller here tries to control the level in the sump by changing the pump speed. And this controller here tries to control the pulp density in a feed to the cyclone by changing the feed um, makeup water valve position. Let's uh, press play again. I'm opening uh, the scope here, which indicates the level in the sump in meters over time. 
you'll notice that the level increases and rapidly during this initial uh, simulation period so the conditions are highly transient as one would expect during um, the startup now you will also notice that our controller is not particularly good in this example for two reasons firstly our sump um, is grossly oversized compared to the rest of the circuit and secondly our controller parameters are unoptimized but let's leave the simulation to run out and because the point I want to make here is that we approach steady state operation over time. So you can see that steady state circuit behavior is really a simplified case of the dynamic system. So if steady state behavior is required, the feed flow rates are kept constant and the simulation is run until the outputs stabilize as we've just illustrated so if batch or semi batch behavior is required the relevant feed streams are closed and the unit block batch responses are uh, recorded so you can see that by doing dynamic modeling and simulation we don't sacrifice any information we only gain information as compared to steady state and modeling and simulation now thirdly most of us have built some sort of model to help us solve our problems now irrespective of the package you prefer to use the following holds true the more detail you add to your model the more data you require to back up your assumptions and calibrate your model the reality though is that experimental data is often quite inaccurate and careful control of our processes may not be possible. So what do we do to mitigate our risks? We conduct more testing and embark on more expensive pilot plant campaigns. The problem though is that without the appropriate physical dynamic tools we cannot really capitalize on our expensive data. Now for various reasons we use the MathWorks suite of products to build our models, the specifics of which I shall elaborate on in upcoming videos. An important feature of this platform is its powerful ability to regress our models to the experimental and real plant data. Now it's not necessary to rerun our simulation, we could simply open the results explorer and all the data generated by the simulation is available at the click of a button. So by the way, we could also easily export all of this data to, for example, Microsoft Excel, if you prefer to work in that environment to generate your reports. So as an example, we could select the ball mill block and we can scroll down to the variable you're interested in. So in this case, we're looking at the mass distribution of each size class in a mill over time. In this case, we're looking at um, the mineral pyrite. Another example, say we are interested in what the pressure and the temperature did at node A, which is the inflow to the hydrocyclone. We could simply find the cyclone block and then click on node A and there you can see the pressure and the temperature variation um, at the inflow. Obviously around about 2400 seconds into the simulation the um, pump switched on and the cyclone started to operate um, how it was supposed to operate. So there are also very nice um, visualization tools available. Here I've uh, created a shortcut key that um, use standard MATLAB uh, plot functions to compare the data. So on the left hand side we got the mass distribution over time and particle size on a large 10 scale and we can compare what that distribution look like to the overflow from the cyclone and you can see here at 2400 seconds 
where that um, uh, cyclone feed pump switched on we started to get rid of all the coarser sizes in the cyclone overflow another example here is a figure of the classification function of the cyclone again it's after 2400 seconds the cyclone started to operate as it was designed to do you can see the, the characteristic s shape of the classification function as reference cases you may want to have a look at what the aerospace and especially the automotive industries have done you would be astonished to see the difference that physical dynamic modeling of individual components and then building simulations of integrated clutch, gear, brake systems, etc. have made to that industry. Think about all the improved safety aspects, reduced emissions and reduced development times of new models. So we as process engineers in the mining industry require visionary mindsets to understand how building physical dynamic models of processes will provide us with that competitive edge. Test data and experience are and always will be essential aspects. However, these new generation models provide the only real methodology to capture information. Because by including the physics and dynamics of material and energy flow, the degrees of freedom of the system is reduced, especially after the model has been calibrated to the real plant behavior. We believe in building bespoke models. Our experience is that it is the only way that we can effectively deal with the unique complexities that each case presents. Each model becomes essentially a living report that requires no in-house expertise to use effectively to conduct what if studies, etc. Now collaboration is a key aspect when creating project specific models of existing new or conceptual plants. Our role is to provide focused support to companies that want to innovate, to help the smart young engineers and experienced individuals in progressive companies understand existing or new process problems to innovate and reduce their technical and financial risks. Now you would have noticed from our comminution flow sheet demo example that each unit block represents a piece of equipment found on a specific metallurgical plant. A custom built interface allows the input parameters to be adjusted by the end user. So this is what our example library looks like. Let's double click on the ball mill unit block. At this tab the end user would enter the initial mill conditions, any reaction rate constants that may be of interest, equipment properties like volumes, species parameters like densities, and material parameters like for example uh, the characteristic breakage matrix of the ore in this specific mill. Now user-friendly drag and drop flow connectors allow easy flow sheet construction and I shall post upcoming videos to illustrate just how simple it is to build these flow sheets once the custom library has been developed. Now an attractive feature of this approach is that it gives us flexibility to match each end user's situation or experience. So by the way these are all arbitrary images used to mask our unit blocks for illustrative purposes. I obtained um, these images from the GrabCAD open source library as acknowledged here at the top. Finally, this diagram explains the typical project workflow. The point here is that value can be created at the initial first level with minimal available data. There's always some initial data available. Importantly, this first level model can also be used to direct the test program and extract maximum value from expensive R&D. The detail or second level 
is typically used to add more complexity where required and to calibrate the model. This level represents the living report of the project and is used to optimize design and operating strategies for the process. Thank you for watching this video. Please visit our website should you require more information.